information technology is about to dramatically change public space. Not long time ago, information technology changed many things. It changed the way we communicate. I just Skyped with my family in Austria. It changed the way we gain goods. Before information technology, you had to cross a public space to go to the store. Now we just order things online. And it changed the way we receive information. But it had also changed the way we move through public space. People on mobile devices meet more instantaneous and are more likely to linger in public spaces. What is interesting is that throughout the history of, of public space, the introduction of any new media had dramatically affected the characteristic of public space. When the newspaper was introduced, for example, it was first too expensive, but you could read the newspaper for free in coffee shops. So people went into coffee shops to read newspapers. That has led to a proliferation of coffee shops that had a dramatic effect on the characteristics of many public spaces. Think about Vienna in many cities around the world. The combination of Wi-Fi and laptop had a similar effect. In 2008, Starbucks introduced free Wi-Fi for all its coffee shops. Within a couple of years, working on a laptop in a coffee store became the norm. The smartphone had a dramatic effect on public space in 2013. In May of 2013, less than 10% accessed the internet through mobile devices. This number changed later that year from 10% to almost 70%. But there are also a lot of tools that are introduced on social media platforms, such as Facebook, that have an immediate impact on the way public spaces are used. In 2008, Facebook launched a feature that allows you to upload videos. In 2009, flash mob became a global phenomenon. In 2010, Facebook introduced community pages. A few months later, in January 2011, this feature was used to organize and mediate a protest at Tahir Square that led to the Egyptian revolution. In 2011, Facebook introduced a new feature. This time you could tag photos based on location. A few months later, Occupy Wall Street. But there are also a lot of other industries that are interested in different ways of using public spaces. The gaming industry, for example. In 2016, Pokemon Go was released, bringing gaming to the physical public space. And there are also a lot of bottom-up movements that are utilizing information technology to change public spaces. The first national day of civic hacking in 2012, for example, what is a started a citizen-driven movement with the goal to impact the use of public space. I think there is a relationship between the mobile device, social media, navigation, and other apps, and the way we move and use public spaces in our cities. And I wonder what will happen to public space if we keep expanding it with information technology. Because many objects that were expanded with information technology changed. We use phones to make pictures. We use watches to measure our heart rate. We use Lyft or Uber to turn our car into a taxi. We use Airbnb to turn our apartment into a hotel room. So I wonder what will happen to public space. Maybe public space will be expanded with features and functions that we have not even thought about before information technology. But public space is very restricted. And the question really is, who will be able to expand public space with information technology or change public space? Municipalities, only corporations, or citizens? 
And the other question is, how will we design these new types of spaces? We used to use master plans to design public space. But the master plan makes assumptions of future developments and promotes long-term implementations. Maybe a more tactical approach is a better answer to more quickly respond to the development of information technology. To design and build public spaces takes a very long amount of time. But what happens if it doesn't work? To rebuild a public space would take an even longer amount of time. What if we think about public spaces as something that is temporary? That way we could test different prototypes and make these ideas more permanent later. Typically, we refer to public space as the physical public space. But what if we conceptualize public space as something that is a hybrid, that is partially hardware, the physical space, and partially software, information technology, that may allow us to introduce and uh, stage completely new events in public spaces? We often think about public space as, as something that emerges from the tension between municipalities and economic forces. But where is the citizen in this process of creating public space? If we equip the citizen with information technology, with all the possibilities of programming and developing apps and other tools, then the citizen can insert themselves in the creation of public spaces. These are issues. I found that these are issues that concern many architects, many urban planners, software engineers, designers, and artists. And I've also found there are a lot of projects that are utilizing information technology to create new types of public spaces. So I decided to write a book about it. Uh, the book Urban Machine is co-authored with Marcella del Signore. It is a report on how information technology is changed, changed public space within the last 10 years. And it presents projects that are utilizing information technology to create new types of public spaces. These projects range from very small projects, like an app that tells you about an event in a public space, to urban furniture or installations that integrate information technology, to information technology that is integrated in bike sharing systems or projects at an even larger scale. One of many projects is Urban Blanket. This project is in Midtown Atlanta. It was created to activate a public space in a very car-centric city. It was a collaboration between Kennesaw State University, the city of Atlanta, Sandbox, and Modern Atlanta, a nonprofit organization. The project was financed through material donations and a very moderate grant, and designed and built with a group of students in less than four months. The material used for this project is Hymax. This material is very thin and very strong, which allowed to introduce, to incorporate Wi-Fi and charging stations and lighting in the project. The form of the project was optimized for people using mobile devices. The curve of the landscape was varied to perfectly cradle people um, of different size. The project can hold a maximum of 20 people, creating a new social condition in the public space. People on smartphones or tablets may use Urban Blanket as a living room or an office when uh, larger groups meet in at Urban Blanket then the project become a more public space. The project had over the years become a very um, popular meeting point in Atlanta, uh, here for the biking community in Atlanta. 
It is also used as a workout place. This was a function that was completely unintended in the design process. And it is across from Starbucks, so you don't have to go to the coffee shop and buy a coffee in order to access free Wi-Fi and work your way on your laptop. Public space information technology has changed the way we, we communicate, we gain goods, and we receive information. The way information technology will change public space, or the way public space will be reframed for a digital culture, will depend on all of us. To make a public space in a digital age really public requires a lot of things. The internet has to be free. The information and data collected by smart cities have, has to be made available and accessible for its citizens. Urban Machine creates a framework for every citizen to actively participate in the creation of public space for a digital culture. I'm worried that if we don't do anything, large corporations will inform the way we use public space. And I hope that if many citizens participate in the creation of public space and in the way public space is, will be reframed in a new way for a digital culture. Thank you.